Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about VAT related questions regarding e-commerce business in the UAE. Today I have with me Viba from Horizon Business Consultancy. She's an expert in VAT matters and we always uh, rely on her when it comes to VAT related questions. So um, before going uh, to my questions, I just wanted to clarify that uh, the questions that we are going to discuss uh, are mostly related to trading uh, of uh, uh, e-commerce, um, whether it's uh, selling through your own platform, uh, e-commerce platform, or whether it's through selling uh, through third-party platforms like Amazon or uh, Noon.com. So, uh, uh, Viba, uh, if you can just tell about uh, yourself and uh, what, what you specialize in, and then we can go uh, ahead with the questions. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, this is Riva here. I'm from Horizon Biz Consultancy. I'm a chartered accountant by profession. Our specialization is uh, uh, tax consultancy services and we deal with uh, Mirazis since long with a lot of VAT clients and nowadays we are coming up with lots of queries uh, from e-commerce uh, clients because because this COVID changes uh, the yes, scenario of exactly. business a lot and lots of uh, small businesses also coming online. So today we are going to discuss about uh, the, the scenarios of taxation or we can say VAT when it comes to the online businesses. So yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, the question I have shortlisted uh, based on the questions I I get from uh, the viewers, uh, the people who are watching my videos mm -hmm. and then coming up with questions. So uh, w one of the uh, common questions is what are the factors uh, to consider uh, from the VAT perspective mm -hmm. before setting up your uh, business in the UAE? Ah, okay. So for VAT perspective, uh, you need to consider whether you want to register your company in uh, mainland or in free zone uh, and then again when it comes to free zone then from VAT perspective there is a difference between free zone and designated zone so you need to check before incorporating your company that whether you want to go for mainland or for free zone mm -hmm. and then again there are the listed free zones by the FT authority mm -hmm. which are the designated zones okay. so you need to check whether you want to go uh, with designated zone or free zone because the taxability of VAT changes according to these uh, company incorporation places mm, okay yeah. all right yeah. so you, you want to say that not all free zones are designated zones no. only some free zones are yes. designated zones yes okay. yes this this is a very important point which you need to consider from VAT perspective and many many uh, uh when many people uh, make mistakes on that part okay that they are they when they are incorporating they're not inquiring whether it is free zone or it is mainland okay all right yeah so um just to uh brief uh, so uh, people should uh, take into consideration uh about their business model and about whether mainland free zone or designated zone um uh, is suitable for yes. their business model basically. yeah yeah okay. and again then for for because in e-commerce there are two type of structure you can say mm -hmm. once you need to register your company then if your goods you you are storing your goods in in ua only that you are looking for warehousing options also Mm. So this is again a very important part in uh, e-commerce business. Then you need to choose where you are going to have a warehousing channel partner. Okay. Because it again uh, depends where is your uh, warehousing partner, the your VAT liability. Mm. So if it is in designated zone, then the liability is different. If it is in mainland, then liability is different. Mm. So there are different scenarios which we are going to t uh, talk further regarding okay. the same. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so when it comes to VAT. Um, do all companies need to register for VAT upon incorporation immediately or there is some sort of a threshold uh, you know upon reaching yeah. then they become liable to uh, register for VAT yeah there is a there is a threshold there are okay. two kind of uh, registration in VAT okay one is voluntary and another is uh, mandatory mm -hmm. so for voluntary registration the limit is 187,000 uh, 87,500 dirham mm -hmm. and for uh, mandatory registration there is a limit of 375,000 dirham Okay. So it is one hundred thousand dollar around. Okay. So if your sales in last twelve months, or it may be in one month, or in in few days, mm -hmm. exceeds this limit, then you have to register for yourself uh, for VAT. Mm -hmm. But then again, here is a very important point in in this e-commerce platform. If you are a non-resident mm -hmm. and uh, you are doing this business, then there is no threshold for the same. You have to register yourself from the first day itself. So when you say non-resident, uh, uh, can you? 
color file a bit more? Do you mean the company registered outside the UAE or if the person is uh, Yeah, the company is register uh, outside. outside the UAE. If okay. the company register inside uh, the UAE, then it is considered as a resident. Okay. Because uh, the, the here, both are the different uh, entities, the person who is the owner of the business and uh, the company. Mm -hmm. So if the company is in UAE, then it means it is a resident company and they, they need to consider the threshold for registration. But if any individual just using the platform and they are, you know, register, uh, they are dealing in UAE and there is no company registration, the for, uh, they are doing business through foreign uh, entity, mm -hmm. then they have to register without any threshold. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's clear. Yeah. Uh, so, um, can you give us uh, examples of uh, taxability of uh, VAT um, for different structures, whether it's a, a main, so mainland company or free zone or designated zone uh, based company? Yeah. So let's let's uh, let's uh, divide the scenarios. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, in one scenario, the the company is incorporated in mainland. Yeah. And then again, the warehouse is again in mainland. Warehouse uh, partner is in mainland. So then when goods are coming, uh, mm -hmm. then you need to report uh, import of goods at the moment when the goods are coming. When you're selling goods to mainland, then there has to be VAT of 5% on the same. But when you're exporting your goods outside the UAE from this UAE entity, mm -hmm. then you need to report export of goods in, in your VAT returns. There is a reporting. So here it, it's a very uh, it's a very important what you need to report and what you not you mm -hmm did mm -hmm. not uh, need to report the same. Mm -hmm. So if it is both are mainland, then if you're importing, then also you need to report when you're sailing in locally in Dubai, then or in it's not Dubai, it's UAE, mm -hmm. then you need to sell, uh, sell, charge 5% for the sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then the, the second scenario, for example, you have a mainland incorporation company and uh, your warehousing channel partner is in designated zone. Mm -hmm. So here it is in designated zone, not free zone. So if it is in designated zone, so your goods are going to store in designated zone. Mm -hmm. So when you are importing the goods, there is no reporting mm -hmm. until the time the goods are in designated zone. Okay. But when there is a uh, there is an order or there is a sale uh, for mainland for UAE, then you need to charge five percent on that sale, and you need to report import when the goods are into the sale process, not at the time of you know when goods are. Uh, staying at a designated warehouse and the custom is also comes in the picture mm -hmm. when you are selling the goods mm -hmm. until the goods are remaining in the designated warehouse there is no custom on the on the same okay all right yeah yeah so this is about uh, mainland company if you have then different different op options you have for uh, warehousing then maybe the, 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 your company is itself incorporated in designated zone mm -hmm. and then you have a warehousing uh, partner is again in the same designated zone or different designated zone may be possible then when you are importing anything there is no reporting when you are exporting anything from that uh, company there is no reporting Mm. It just the reporting comes in the picture when you're selling anything to mainland companies or within UAE. Okay. So this is a this is a structure is mainly for those businesses who just you know uh, want to have the privilege of Dubai uh, transportation and logistics facility hub for as trade a, basically. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, how about uh, dropshipping business? Like uh, as you know now, many people are. Uh, opting for dropshipping business yeah. where they don't have a warehouse yeah uh, what they do is they take an order through their e-commerce platform uh -huh. uh, from the customers uh -huh. and then directly place an order to the supplier mm -hmm. or a manufacturer mm -hmm. uh, probably in other country like mm. china or uh, you know other countries yes. where the manufacturer yes, uh, yes. manufacturing happens yes uh, and the suppliers directly deliver to the uh, customers mm -hmm. so is this is this uh, model also taxable like do they also fall under the same uh, VAT regulations yeah they fall under the VAT regulations because they are providing services or uh, services of you know through e-commerce platform then again it depends on their structure so mm. if if they they don't incorporate in UAE and they are doing uh, trading only through uh, the platform e-commerce yeah. platform then first of all they need to register from the first transaction itself because there is no threshold for the same 
Mm. And second, when they are selling anything in UAE, they have to charge 5% and they have to pay custom also uh, 5% uh, on the same. Mm. And they need to report import of goods and the local uh, sale of the goods in VAT returns. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think in the drop shipping business model, uh, the custom uh, clearance and paying the custom duty. Yeah. Um, uh, is basically handled by the shipping companies yes and the clients what I understand from you uh, they need to be aware of the VAT liability yes and they need to basically uh, follow the regulations uh, when it comes to the yes VAT, yes right? because there is a there's a 5% custom then there is a 5% VAT on the local sale okay. so they need to work out on the margins and their their cost everything mm -hmm. accordingly because to get a good sh shipping partner for the same is again a mm -hmm. challenge so you need to figure out all the elements when you are you you, you are willing to start your company mm -hmm. in in UAE okay all right yeah yeah so um so now we discussed about things to consider before starting a business mm -hmm. um, um now once the business is established mm -hmm. uh, what the customers need to be aware of ah. uh, once they start their operations. Yeah. So first of all, if, if you have a company here uh, and you are importing the goods for mm -hmm. your e-commerce business, then you should have a custom number, of course. Then your custom number should link your VAT or registration number. Mm -hmm. Because if that is not linked, then you ha have to pay 5% at the time of clearance of goods. Okay. So this is a very important part which you need to take care. Mm. So if even, for example, you're not able to meet the threshold of registration, which I mentioned 187,500, mm. and you are not registered for VAT. So till, till the time you're not registered for VAT, you have to pay 5% at the time of clearance of goods. So this is an additional cost, you know, from mm. business perspective, 5% mm. custom, then addition on that 5% VAT. So I advise to register for VAT before you start the transaction and importing the goods. Mm -hmm. And after the registration, link your custom number with your VAT registration number so that there is no 5% liability uh, need to bear by the business. Okay. And you can directly clear the goods once it is it is linked without any payment. It mm -hmm. just comes into your reporting part of VAT return that, okay, you imported this goods on this date and everything. So mm -hmm. they have a very good system, you know, they yeah. built up and they linked that Everything together. is linked, basically. Yeah. Then another thing is which they need with, with which uh, need to be considered is a is a reporting of exports of goods. So export on exports of goods, there is no VAT. This is zero percent VAT. Mm. So if you are declaring any exports of goods from uh, Dubai, then you need to maintain the proper documents. Mm. There is a proper bill of exit, proper invoice. There is a proper receipt from foreign companies or foreign customer uh, which with uh, whom you are dealing. So you have the proper substantial record that you actually exported those goods. Mm -hmm. And I advise to maintain the proper books of accounts, you mm -hmm. know, because in e-commerce business, the quantum of transaction is very large. If, yes. If we consider with the small, small orders and the transactions. So it's better to keep the record because here as per VAT regulations, uh, the maintenance of rec uh, records is compulsory for five years. Okay. So you need to keep the track of all, all these things. So there can be an inspection uh, from the VAT yes. or tax authorities yes. and they can request document for the past five years. Yes, yes. Whether you are registered or not registered. Yes, for yes. They, yeah. So the companies uh, better uh, need to be aware of uh, what the they need to do. implications of not yes. following the rules rather than uh, leaving it to the you know, yes. uh, destiny and then yes. be penalized with huge yeah. Uh, penalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. true, true. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, there are so many technicalities when it comes to VAT. It may sound very easy. Uh, however, when you do the operations, uh, there are so many technicalities you need to consider from the customs perspective and from the uh, perspective where you need to register the company, uh, whether it's in the mainland, free zone or designated zone. You need to research and find out which business structure is uh, more suitable to your particular business model. Uh, so uh, for today, that's it. And if you have any questions related to uh, setting up e-commerce businesses, you can reach out to me. If you have any questions related to uh, VAT uh, matters, you can reach out to Viba uh, through Horizon Biz Consultancy. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned.